episode 11. That's right, episode 11 of the Run It Back podcast. This is Jeff, my guy Parnell, and we are here to have some real and raw conversations that are relevant to your life in Christ. Parnell, we're 11 deep, man. I'm just going to put you on the spot. Like, What's been your favorite conversation? Yeah, we've Every had week, so many good ones. Um, you know, I've said that that's my favorite episode, and we'll we'll run through it. We'll edit them. You know, you'll do the editing, <laughs> and I'll get a chance to run through them. And, and every week, it's my favorite episode. So uh, which one was my favorite? It was the one we just got done recording. <laughs> but if you ask me next week, it'll be this one. I thought you were going to say it's the one we're about to record uh, right now. You're right? only, you're only as good yet. as your last recording. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Well, hey, thanks for joining us again tonight or today. We're talking uh, about rest and how important it is um, and necessary it is for the life of every person, especially Christians. But before we get into the conversation, would you do us a favor on YouTube? Hit that subscribe button. Hit it right now. You want to hit the bell icon because when we post our videos every Friday at 6 a.m., you want to get notified. So hit that bell icon, subscribe. And if you are listening on Apple or on Spotify, do us a favor, leave us a rating, a five-star review, so more and more people can hear the truths that we are sharing in these podcasts. Yeah. It's been an amazing journey, and we're just getting started. We're just getting started. So we're excited to continue to see all that God is doing. So share these videos, encourage people to watch, and let's continue to spread the hope and the love of the gospel of Jesus Christ with our community. So that said, Parnell, we're talking about rest um, I would love to know um, your thoughts on this topic because it's a place that all of us have to learn um, as as Christ followers to find ourselves to intentionally make sure that rest it's going to feel like a of bit of a spelling bee uh, today because I'm going to spell two words uh, throughout this time uh, in this conversation. But how I would summarize rest, how I would spell rest, is a b i d i n g, abiding. You know, God calls us to this place of mm. abiding in him, mm. resting in him. I love this conversation because in ministry, working for a church, whether it's a volunteer basis, working as a, a full-time yeah. staff member, maybe a, a bivocational pastor, maybe a part-time youth minister position, whatever the case may be, you get caught up in the work of ministry. And God didn't call us to worship ministry. He called us to worship him. Right in spirit and in truth. And, and I, right. a lot of people, I believe a lot of ministers mm. have been caught up in building their own kingdom and making a God and making an idol out of ministry. Mm. And I believe that comes from a place of not abiding in him, or as we're getting ready to talk about today, Jeff, uh, a place of not uh, resting in him. It's, it's a difficult one because, you know, we are supposed to labor for the Lord. We're supposed to, uh, to, to work, uh, not for our salvation. Um, you know, it's only grace through faith that we're saved. But, you know, there should be evidence. There should be fruit, and we should serve. But at the same time, um, mm -hmm. service can become our little G God, right? Like we can become so focused, so hyper-focused on serving um, and making things happen. And, you know, so many people with good hearts will hustle to make things happen for ministry, for right. church, uh, with a good heart to reach people, right? Um, but at what cost? But at what cost? Because what I've seen in my own life is that you become so uh, consumed with all the work that has to be done. There's never enough time resting yep. in his presence. And that's where burnout happens. Uh, that's where frustration happens. Yep. Uh, that's where bitterness, I believe, of, of a root begins to take up because you get frustrated because you get worn out because it, it becomes too much. You know, when, when Jesus says that, that, that to take his yoke because it's light, um, how many yeah, people right. as they serve in ministry right. feel heavy, you know, feel worn out and they don't, mm -hmm. they don't feel, they don't feel that relief. They don't feel that relief of life. And I believe it's because we get things out of position. We're not resting enough. We're doing too much Absolutely. work. We got to learn to rest. When it's important. you're tired uh, spiritually, when you're fatigued spiritually, what happen is uh, what happens is we let our guard down, you know. And when we let our guard down, that's when the enemy has an opportunity to creep in, mm. you know. When mm. we're resting in Him, when when we're abiding in Him, when godly fruit is is stemming and coming from our lives because we're so closely attached to to the vine that uh, we're producing that fruit. As a result, when that doesn't happen, we let our guard down. We're not equipping ourselves. Uh, you know, with, with the armor of God and lust creeps mm. in. This is why I believe a lot of ministers have so many different moral failures 
because right. they are spiritually fatigued. It doesn't condone it. It doesn't condone it, but they're spiritually fatigued or uh, they're caught up in pride. Yeah. They're caught up in their kingdom. And when you're caught up in your kingdom and not God's kingdom, you're not abiding. Mm. So everything, all the fruit that's being produced from your life is being produced on your own. And it may appear to be fruit, uh, but there's a difference between authentic godly fruit and manufactured fruit. And sometimes you can't, you know, this right. is why Jesus tells us to to taste and see right. that the Lord is good. He wants us to taste that fruit that's being produced out of our mm. life that comes from him. And that's how we're able to tell the real from the fake. You shall know them by their by their fruits, by the kind of fruit that they produce. And so yeah. uh, spiritual fatigue, it's real. But uh, spiritual fatigue is also a real danger. And if we're right. not resting in him, if we're not abiding in him, we let our guard down. We can't, you can't spell, here's the right. second word, you can't spell restored, <laughs> you can't spell restored without <laughs> rest. You need rest if you want to see restoration in our lives and restoration yes. in the lives of others. Well, let's go right to scripture. I mean, if once the, the topic was announced, I'm sure that people know where we're going, uh, where we're going to this conversation. Luke chapter 10, uh, this incredible scene that, that mm -hmm. unfolds in the presence of Jesus. But, you know, I think about our own our own lives is like how many times is Jesus available to us? Is he is he willing and ready to deposit something into our lives? But we're too busy doing work, right? We're too busy hustling to make things happen that we miss out on something very critical for our lives and, and for our spirits that Jesus wants to give us. And so Luke chapter 10, beginning in verse 38, uh, Jesus is at the home of Mary and Martha. And it says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister's left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you're worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. I think of all the Sunday school classes, all the vacation Bible schools, all the week to week ministry that we put such a, a emphasis on that we don't even spend time um, in our own personal devotion time, our own prayer time, um, our own just rest time in the Lord's presence because we're too busy doing his work. And Jesus just said one is better than the other. <laughs> if you can only choose one right now in a perfect world, we want to be doing both. You know, we want our our work, our serving to be an overflow of our abiding, as mm -hmm. you said. Uh, but if we can only have one, if you can only do one thing with your time, you know, if you're on a time crunch and you got, you know, so much time and yeah. you can only do one. Jesus said yeah. one's better. One's In better this than the Americanized other, Western culture. We don't understand rest. We don't understand that word because we're 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 in one of two categories. Okay, mm. we're in one of two categories. We're either on the go, busy, hustling that hustling mentality, um, that grinding mentality. We're either in that category or we're lazy. Yeah, <laughs> one one or the other. Yet you see in mm. different cultures and different parts mm. of the world, you'll go to some countries and they're not rushed for anything. They will get there when they get there, and the party will start when they when they arrive. You know, look at the life of Jesus, who's the ultimate template for us all. Jesus wasn't in a rush for a lot. I don't see Jesus hurried right. by the issues of life. Right. And so we find ourselves in this westernized culture because of our mindset, because of the society that we live in, uh, where we're either rushed or let's not let's not confuse godly rest and abide in him for laziness. <laughs> you know, God wants us to be, be, to be active, right? right? right um, and right. to be, to be working, you know, he gives, he gives a great analogy when he, he, when he uh, talks about the ants and how they're constantly busy, they're constantly working. Uh, you know, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few, you know, um, hmm. laziness is also a, a weapon uh, that the enemy uses against uh, Christians. You see a lot of laziness in church circles. Brother, check this out, okay? I know we're talking about rest, but uh, people, mm -hmm. again, will get this misconstrued and say, hey, well, we, that means I don't have to do anything. When we talk about rest, I believe, <laughs> yeah, right. I believe when you and I yeah, are talking about time. rest, we're talking <laughs> about this this close <laughs> encounter, daily 
uh, experience daily worship in a private time with God. It's not, yeah. it's not laziness, but you know what you see in a lot of church circles? Yes. Straight up laziness, <laughs> laziness. You'll see, you'll see this and you know, again, again, one of the, mm. those two categories, you'll have the grinders, but then you'll have again, lunch meeting after lunch meeting, coffee meeting. How much is really being accomplished, you know? Um, and again, this isn't, this isn't, this doesn't come from a place of judgment. Right. This just comes from a place of me being able to, to witness it, uh, see it, seeing it behind the scenes, seeing the struggles behind the scenes. When I was working in ministry, I gained so, so much weight because every other meeting was at, was at a burger, you know, uh, you know, a burger <laughs> place or whatever. And so, um, again, we're not going to mistake a rest, uh, for laziness. God still wants us to be uh, actively moving for him. But again, the trap is, is when we can, or when we make that a God in our lives. Yeah. You know, I found myself in this place, you know, I had the opportunity when I moved to Iowa in um, August of 2019, I had the opportunity to go into full-time ministry. And so in full-time ministry, I found that there were a lot of things that had to get accomplished. You know, we're, we're doing ministry and we're reaching people and we're doing programming and we're, um, putting media together. We're doing a lot of things. The rhythm of uh, the youth ministry required a lot, you know, a lot of preparation, a, a lot of, of creating. And so I would find myself in the morning when I would go to the churches, we had a morning Bible study um, with Pastor Gary and a, and a few gentlemen uh, that we would read scripture uh, through the Bible every day. And I found myself when I would go to the office wanting to uh. skip out on the Bible reading because I needed to get to my work. Uh, because there was a lot of work that needed right. to be done. And there was good work. I mean, not bad, right? Not bad. Not bad stuff. We're, we're reaching people in Jesus' name. Uh, but at what cost? I, I, was, I was trying to pour yeah. out of a pitcher that hadn't been filled yet. I, I think that's what I see a lot of people doing is they're trying to give from a, a well that's running dry. They're trying to pour out from a cup uh, with nothing that's even coming out as they just shake and shake and shake it, you know, and saying they're trying to do something good. And that's, I, I, I was convicted by it. And, and I shared with Pastor mm. Gary, I was like, you know, I almost skipped today after having skipped a couple times, I almost skipped today. And the Lord convicted me, you need to get into my presence and into my word first, and then the rest of it will take care of itself. And you know what I found out is that I, as I prioritized my time in scripture every morning, yeah. I performed at a yeah. higher capacity. Yeah. I performed with my spirit in a better yeah. place, my mind in a better place. Like, you know, I was just operating on a higher level, not because I was any better, but because of what the Holy Spirit had done in my life after I'd spent time with him. And so, you know, I encourage people because many of us um, prayerfully are serving in our church, are mm. volunteering. If you're not, shame on you. As Parnell said, we need yeah, to be volunteering yeah. and helping out. You don't need to just be sitting on the sofa right. watching ball games all day. You know, that's not abiding. Yeah. That's not that's not resting. Uh, that's being lazy. But for those of you that are that are helping make ministry happen and doing a wonderful job, and I, and I thank you for that, yeah. make sure yeah. that you're taking care of your soul first. It's got to be number one. It's easy to fall into that trap of saying, well, I've got yep. these things to do. You will always have things to do. There will always be another job. There'll always be another task. There'll always be another responsibility for you to handle. Always Can't bank on it. There will always be something to do, but everything we do must come second to first absolutely abiding right. with our Lord. One of the, one of the key factors in me uh, resting in Jesus one of the things that I do uh, to find that rest and to abide in God is I meditate on his word. His word says to God says for us to meditate on it day and mm. night. You know, the, the Hebrew word for meditate is haga, you know, haga. And, and uh, another way you could put that is to chew on, to chew on. So, so to meditate on God's word means to haga. It means mm. to, to chew on it, right? So you have, I'm going to get grotesque here, but uh, everyone's, I'm sure, uh, it's six o'clock in the morning for a lot of you that are watching. So, uh, forgive me for ruining your breakfast, but you know, a, a cow <laughs> has, we're in Iowa, so I have to use farm terms, but a, a cow has four chambers in their stomach and, and what do they do? They chew the cud. So, uh, they, they digest it and then they regurgitate it right? and then they rechew it and it goes in the second chamber. And what, what happens? They regurgitate right. it. This idea of meditating on God's word, hagan it means to chew it uh, over and over again, meditate yeah. on it. Mm, I'm meditating on it. You meditate on it uh, day and night. God wants mm. us to muse, M-U-S-E, 
muse on his word, meditate on his word day and night. And you know what the enemy wants us to do? He wants to amuse us. You know, another way you could say amuse us, amusing means Mm. to check out. You're mentally checking out. And remember, God, uh, the enemy has a counterfeit for everything God does. So if God wants yeah. us to muse, to meditate on his word, the enemy wants to distract us. He wants to amuse us. We go to an amusement park. We watch TV to be amused. Right. We sit down to unwind because we're just trying to mentally check out. And that's not a place where God wants us. And Jeff, I believe the reason why a lot of people aren't finding rest in the Holy Spirit is because they're too be, uh, busy being entertained by the things of the world. Mm, man, come on, come on. You're preaching now. Like that's, that's a place that so many people fall into because, um, life is hard. It's busy. It, it's draining. And so our mind naturally goes to the deceptive right. place of, I've just got to rest. Well, yes, you've got to rest, but there's a different type of rest than we typically go to. Our, our rest is a bag of potato yeah. chips and a soda on the lazy boy. Like that's, that's what we think our rest is. And you know what? That's not rest. Um, you will find that you won't, if you do that daily, you will not be satisfied uh, because there is a God-shaped hole in every single one of us that can only be filled with time in his presence. It can only be filled by him. And so many times we try to fill it with so many other things and it doesn't work. And so we've got to go to him. We've got to go and rest in his presence. And I, and I love what you say, brother, you know, just about um, our intentionality with the word, because there's a difference between um, quickly reading something like it's a, a project that we have to get through versus intentionally looking at the word and thinking about how it applies to our life yeah. and thinking about Holy Spirit, what are you speaking to me right now? Like intentionally working through every single verse to see what God wants to do. You know, when the, when, when scripture says the, the words alive and active and sharper than a two edged sword, you know, it's active in our lives. It's an active word for your life. It's a help for you where you're at today. And that's the amazing thing about our God is he meets us right where we're at. And he has a word for us every time that we get into his presence. And so it's not a speed read, you know, it's not like the class project that you have where you're just trying to get through it and get it done so you can write a report on it and forget it and move on. No, we mm-hmm. want to hide his word in our heart, right? As David said, hide your word in my heart so I might not sin against you. Well, how are you going to hide a word right. in your heart that you're not continually thinking about, meditating on, wrestling with, reading again? You know, like if it's going to be hidden in here, then you, that means something that you read, hold on to, think about, and live. And that can only happen as you intentionally engage with the scriptures. So yeah, that's a great, that's a great word, man. Like we just got to make sure um, that we are doing that intentionally. And that's part of this abiding that we're talking about. And you will find that you are more rested in mm-hmm. God's presence than any nap you could ever take or any just right. you know, lazy right. boy <laughs> moment you Resting could have in is your a living godly room. principle. Right. Resting is a godly principle. This is why after the creation story, what did God do on the seventh day? He rested. Now, is God up there taking a nap? Mm, <laughs> like, does God get physically exhausted? The Bible says that our God doesn't slumber, nor does he sleep. Right. And so what that means when he when he was resting on the seventh right. day, that means he's, he that means he ruled and he reigned. Like resting is a godly principle. So if you go over to Exodus chapter 20 hmm. and we'll look at verses one through 17, uh, most of us are familiar with this, the 10 commandments, right? Then God gave the people all of these instructions. I am the Lord, your God, who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. You must not have any other God, but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them, for I am the Lord your God. I am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even the children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commandments. You must not misuse the name of the Lord, your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Then verse eight, where I really want to hone in on Jeff, remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to who? Dedicated to the Lord, your God. 
On that day, no one in your household may do any work. Oh this includes your sons, your daughters, your males, your female servants, your livestock, any foreigners that live among you. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. But on the seventh day, he rested. This That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it mm. apart as as holy. Okay, And so we, at some point, I'm sure, Jeff, will get into a discussion on the Sabbath. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of discussion, a lot of thoughts on the Sabbath. Um, you know, I really, my family and I have really gravitated toward honoring the Sabbath on the day that God intended, which is Saturday. Um, and so, since doing that, that's been such a healthy place for my for my family and I. And again, maybe that's something that you and I can unpack on this podcast is talking about the Sabbath uh, as we're you know in light of rest, but you know, resting is something that, um, God, uh, you know, God intends for us to do, and we can only find that rest in him. Yeah. Intentionality, right? Intentionality. We've got to determine in our heart. Uh, we just talked about this a few podcasts ago, determine in our heart, heart, how we're going to live, determine in our heart that we're going to be obedient to God's word, to his call on our life. And then we're going to live that out. And so what that, whatever that looks for you, whatever, like the ebb and flow, of what life looks for you. Um, I just encourage you, make sure that rest is a priority. Make sure that kingdom work, which is good work, make sure kingdom work never comes above your abiding in Christ. You've got to prioritize it. You've got to be intentional about it. You've got to find time in his presence. And so whatever that looks like for you and your family, make sure that it's happening um, and you'll be better because of it. You'll be better because of it. God honors us um, as we live according to his word. So live according to his word and make rest a priority and you'll be better. And you know what? Everyone else will be better because of it too. Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. That's a super powerful scripture, Jeff. You know, that scripture is really mm. like laying out the characteristics of our savior. It's laying out the characteristics of our God. It says, it says, take my yoke upon you. Let yeah. me teach you. Jesus wants to teach us. God wants to teach us something, right? Because I am gent or mm. I am humble and gentle at heart. You will find rest for your souls. And so, you know, that's the place that I just really want to 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 land yeah. at with this conversation is when we try to do everything ourselves, it sucks. Like when when uh when I get fatigued spiritually and Jeff, <laughs> man, when I'm not yeah. abiding in the word, when I'm not abiding in the Lord, man, as a husband, I suck. You know, as a father, I suck. If I wasn't abiding in Jesus, hmm. I would be a cheater. If I wasn't abiding in Jesus, I would be an abuser. If I wasn't abiding in Jesus, I would be a terrible friend. You and I wouldn't get along. You would, you, you would despise me likely. Yeah, you know, you'd probably love me because you're, you're really good at loving your, your enemies and loving those that it's not easy to love. You do that really well. You love those <laughs> who uh, some people find it hard to love. You do that really well, Jeff. But, you know, when, I, when I'm not abiding, I suck. You know, and so that's the only place for me. The only hope for Parnell Davis is abiding in Jesus. And when I do that, guess what? It's no longer Parnell Davis. It's the Holy Spirit living in yeah. me. And so I would encourage you, uh, if you're at a place where, mm. where you're mm. just – Busy, 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 and you feel fatigued. We have ministers quitting. Pastors are on the decline because they're just wore out. It, verse yeah. 29 of Matthew 11, take my yoke upon you. Yeah. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Take the rest you need to rejuvenate. Abide in Jesus, and as you do, uh, your ministry, yeah. your life, uh, the people around you are going to be so blessed at the fruit that's being produced from your life. And it's not going to be, be because of you. It's going to be because of the Holy spirit mm. living in you and you attaching yourself to the vine. So again, I encourage you to rest in Jesus guys. We pray that this conversation has been, uh, uh, helpful to you. We pray this conversation has blessed you. And most of all, we play, pray mm. that, uh, you would just find your rest in Jesus. And before we go, Jeff, would you mind praying us out and praying for those that are just tired Amen. spiritually? You know, they're, they're just on the go. 
uh, maybe the issues of life is just beating them up, right? And and they're just struggling finding that time with God. Would you just pray for our viewers and our listeners yeah. right now? Absolutely. I invite you right now, no matter what you're doing, just to pause, even if you have to pull over on the side of the road or have to set everything down. Uh, let's just get into God's presence for just a moment, that sweet presence of our Father. Lord, we just come to you, God, thanking you uh, that we find life in you. Lord, thanking you that uh, you love us. And Lord God, uh, we can bring everything that, that we carry in this life to you, Lord God, knowing uh, that we can just drop it um, at your throne, at your feet, Lord God. And instead, we can pick up peace. We can pick up strength and hope, mm. Lord God, that uh, our spirits can be renewed uh, because you are a good father who just provides that for us. And Lord God, I just pray for the person that's listening or watching right mm. now, God, that is just just worn out, struggling, um, God, just on the on the on the edge of breaking, Father, we just pray by the power of your Holy Amen. Spirit um, and your loving conviction that you remind us of the power of rest to abide in you, Lord God. Help us to find time in our schedule, even no matter what it costs, no matter what we have to give up, God, that we find time in our schedule to intentionally get into your presence. And Father, I thank you that as we do, you are faithful to give us what we need for this life, Lord God. I, I thank you that, that your yoke truly is easy, Lord God, that, that there is no God, burden Jesus. we carry with you, but God, instead, we carry the strength of your Holy Spirit. So, Father, I just pray right now that every person listening mm, and watching, Lord God, is empowered by your Holy Spirit, Lord God, to find mm -hmm. the rest and the strength that they need for their life. And God, thank you for doing it, yeah. Father. Thank you, Lord God, that our spirits are renewed. Father, I thank you that we're strengthened, Lord God, that we're able to stand firmly, um, Lord God, and able to carry out all that we are asked to do because we first spent time with you. God, may we prioritize you first above all else in this world, and you'll take care of every detail upon that. Amen. And thank Amen. you in Jesus' Guys, name. be refreshed, uh, be rejuvenated, and find your rest in Jesus. God bless, and until next week, we'll see you at the Run It Back podcast next Friday. God bless, y'all.